Hey YouTube, it's Emmanuel from Tech Insomnia and today I'm going to be revamping an older gaming PC and bringing it right up to speed with some newer parts. Let's jump right in. So I've got this bad boy open on my workbench right now and it looks like it was gutted. Not sure exactly what CPU is in this computer but we're definitely going to find out. Looks like here's the fan for the heatsink. I'll probably be upgrading this fan. Good news is we've got an M.2 slot. This is a Fractal Define R5 case. Really, really nice case. Let's see if we can take this to the next level. So as for parts that we'll be putting into this computer, we're gonna be using four sticks of eight gigabytes of RAM, DDR4, G-Skill, Trident Z. Really, really good quality RAM. This will definitely serve the purpose. Mainly my client's gonna be using this computer for Call of Duty, so this will definitely fit the bill. For storage, we'll start with the secondary storage hard drive, which is gonna be a Seagate Iron Wolf Pro, four terabytes, 7200 RPM. This is actually a NAS hard disk drive, which is very high quality, very very reliable. For the main SSD, we're going with Western Digital Black SN770. This is a one terabyte full NVMe SSD. It's a performance SSD designed for gaming. So we're gonna get really, really good read-write speeds out of this one for sure. For the power supply, we'll be running a Corsair CX750M, which will be more than enough power for this build. And the star of the show, we'll be running an Asus GeForce RTX 3060, eight gigs of RAM, PCIe 4.0, which is gonna give us a little bit of leg room for possibly upgrading to let's say higher demand games in the future. Now the case fans I'm gonna be running on this computer are the Pure A12 LED Red. Thermal take always gives a really nice glow for their LED fans if you get them in blue or red. The ambiance that comes out of this fan is really, really nice. And I mean, these were on sale, so I've got seven of them here. Let's see, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the seventh one will rig it for this heat sink. So we'll have all seven case fans with that nice red glow in this fully rebuilt case. I'm gonna gut this entire computer, get everything nicely cleaned out, disassembled, get all the case fans out. We'll find out what CPU we're running. Hit that like and subscribe button. I'm gonna give tips along the way. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So I've got the computer mostly disassembled and I want to start with the first tip, which is in regards to removing thermal compound from a processor. Now what I like to do is I used to like to use rubbing alcohol. So I like to use 50%, you can use any type. And I'll take a paper towel and I'll basically soak it to the point where it's damp. Now it's not dripping. Then what I'll do is before you take a wet paper towel with rubbing alcohol to this, it'll smudge this and basically make it even more of a mess than it already is. So you want to take a dry bunch of Kleenex and just use the Kleenex. See how much we got off there? So completely dry Kleenex over the surface first, just to get the majority of that thermal compound off first. And now I can finish up the rest with my damp paper towel. Same thing with the heat sink itself. So I've got my dry Kleenex here. I'm just gonna take as much off as I possibly can. Look at all that. It's almost completely clean now. Now I'll just run a wet paper towel over it. And after a little bit more, it'll be like new. So I've managed to get all the thermal off of the CPU and we can see that this is a Ryzen 5 5600. So this is a really good processor. This is gonna serve the purpose very well on this build. Now a question you might have is how did I manage to get this board so incredibly clean when it was literally riddled with dust, especially areas and tight corner spaces? that now look like they don't even have any dust at all. How did I manage to get them so clean? Well, the trick to that is micro attachments for the vacuum. Now, a lot of people criticize online saying that these generate static electricity and shouldn't be used, but I'll tell you one thing, I've been using this method for over 20 years on thousands of computers, laptops, desktops, any type of electronics that need to be cleaned, whether it's interior or exterior cleaning, and I've never had a problem. So that's a really, really good tip in order to achieve that new look <laughs> and get rid of a lot of those small dust particles that can kind of creep up. 
you can see I did a pretty good job. Now with the board flipped over on protective material like it was before, another tip I can offer and something I like to do before I put the board back into the computer is I'm gonna go ahead with my screwdriver and I'm just going to give all the screws, see that one was really loose, just a little bit of a tighten, just to make sure everything is firm within the back of the computer. You can see a lot of these screws I'm turning on. Some of them aren't moving at all, but some of them were particularly loose. So it's just a good idea to just go over everything once over and just make sure everything's tight. Don't over tighten it, but just tighten it to the point where it's not loose and that'll decrease vibration in the board and in the entire computer with all the fans and everything moving inside. So inside the case here, I just wanna give you guys a quick example of exactly what I'm referring to when I'm talking about those hard to reach areas, dust wise, and how important a micro attachment tool for the vacuum can be in a case like this when you're trying to basically renew or revive a really dusty case. Now this is just a quick example to reference how effective good micro attachments for the vacuum can really be when dealing with those tight corners and spaces where dust can accumulate and be hard to tackle. Now before I throw the motherboard back in, I just want to stress the importance of making sure that the rivets for the screws that hold the motherboard in place are all present and tightened. Now you see how this one is very loose? See how I can just turn this one with my fingers? That's not tight enough. It should be tight to the point where I can't turn it with my fingers, but not over tightened where it would shave the hole that the thread inserts into. I'm gonna get the motherboard put back in now, do a little bit of the wiring and we'll check back in as soon as that's done. I'm gonna do this in steps part by part so you can see the progress of the entire build. Ran the wires from behind for a cleaner look. This is the HD audio, USB 2.0, USB 3.0, and I put wire loom on the case wires just for added protection, just to keep them all together. Something important to keep in mind if you're trying to achieve that clean wireless type look is you wanna make sure that where the wires connect to the actual switches and ports, you give them extra slack before you put the zip ties because if you just run the wires and put the zip ties, you risk the chance of basically putting pressure where these wires connect to the switches and ports on the other side. And I mean, if you tighten the zip ties too tight, you could loosen them or affect the functionality of the ports and switches. So just something to remember, if you wanna use zip ties, it's totally fine, but just make sure you give it slack whenever you're tying those zip ties so that things are not too tight. There's give from the other side. Power supply is in and I ran the wires as cleanly as I could going through the back of the case and coming out the sections that they needed to. So there's the CPU power, motherboard power. I also mounted the secondary hard drive to the case on risers, just to give it a little bit of lift so that I could attach the power for the hard disk drive from the back cleanly. And I mean, this is solid, you can see, that's not moving anywhere. So I've got the case fans installed now. And a lot of people like to go about fans a different way. Personally, I like to use zip ties only because I feel like zip ties really give me the ability to put the fans in places where I want them to be. And also it kind of limits case vibration through screws that might be touching the metal. Really gives you the ability to have that clean look and get those fans exactly where you want them to be. Now, once again, here with the wiring for the case fans, I ran them along the back and then zip tied them. And then I have them going through the port here cleanly into the back and I made sure to give extra slack for each and every single one you can see it's loose all of them are that way I'm not pulling on the wires that connect to the actual motor of the fans so I mean all in all turned out pretty well now these braided fan Y adapters are actually worth their weight in gold because they're gonna allow the user to control all three speeds of all six case fans using the built-in switch that's included with this fractal design case. So that's really, really cool. Got the Y adapters in now. I had to modify the connectors. So I put a little bit of Tessa tape just to be safe. Got them all running down here. 
Now what I've done is I've kind of left them in uniform fashion just in case they need to be serviced in the future. They're easily accessible just by removing the rear panel. But all in all, the wiring turned out pretty good. <laughs> SSD is in and now it's time for the heat sink. So I've put a very thin layer of Arctic Silver 5 thermal compound. After 20 years in the business, hundreds of computers, this is in my opinion, the best product on the market. I know there's a lot of competitors out there, but in my experience, this just yields the best results. Heatsink is in and mounted correctly. Now the Phillips head screws were not allowing me to get this thing really tight, so very carefully I just used a wrench on all four screws. And now we could see that it's very solid. It's on there and it's not moving at all, so. I'm gonna let this cure overnight and then we'll get back to the rest of the build. RAM is installed and I was able to mount one of the same Thermaltake A12 LED fans that I've used in this entire case. And what's really nice about this fan is it's actually PWM, so it works great as a CPU fan. And now they're all in uniform fashion, which is great. Now I spoke with my client, we're gonna go Wi-Fi with this computer, so I went and grabbed an adapter. This'll pair nicely with the Rogers modem. We are though missing one of the tray covers for the back of the CPU case. So let me see if I can find one. This looks like the right one. Let's see, perfect. Super clean. Now it's time for the GPU. Absolutely gorgeous GPU. GPU is in and I've secured the power cable to the actual heatsink of the GPU itself, which just gives it a cleaner look and won't have this power cable anywhere we don't want it to be. Now, if you're gonna try this, you wanna make sure that the zip ties do not run or obstruct the motion or path of the fan blades itself. So, I mean, sometimes on certain graphics cards, the cover for the GPU will have holes and you can just secure the zip tie to it. I have to get a little creative on this one. But I mean, otherwise, very cleanly done. So as I mentioned before, the really cool thing about this build is that switch is actually wired to all six case fans. So I can literally adjust the speed. That's medium, that's low where the fans still spin, but I guess it just cuts the light because it's very low power. Medium, high, brilliant. Man, this thing's seriously crushing. Performance above the 86th percentile. Gee. CPU usage right after the test. SSD read write speed blazing. Well, this one's done. Hope you guys found value. Hit that like and subscribe button and stay tuned for more.